Okay, in order for me to finish the triangle choke, a lot of things have to be in place here. Okay, the first and probably one of the most important things is this front, this first leg that's over his shoulder and across his neck. I want to get this part of my leg right on the side of his neck and put my calf down right on the back of his neck. Now what that does is it, it makes my shin perpendicular to his spine. So I'm going to come here. Now sometimes it's going to be difficult to get to that position if you don't have the right angle. If I'm directly underneath him here, it's going to be hard to get to it. I'm going to rely on flexibility. I don't want to have to rely on the flexibility. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate my body over a little bit so I can get a better angle on him. So now my leg comes right on the back of his neck a little bit easier because I have a better angle. So now my leg, this part of my leg is right on the side of his neck. My calf is right on the back of his neck and my leg my shin is perpendicular to his spine. Now, I'm going to push it, pull it down. This leg's going to come over the top. Now, I want the inside of my thigh to touch his ear. I don't want to come on his, I don't want to be on the, on the side of his shoulder. Be right on top of his shoulder here. So now you can't see any shoulder exposed. Now, when I get to this position, I want to lock this down. I'm going to squeeze my knees. Now, after I squeeze my knees, I also want to raise my hips. Now, in order for me to get the maximum pressure from my legs, I have to point my, to my toes up. A lot of people I see, they point their toes down, like ballerinas. You don't want to point your toes down like that. You want to have them up. Here, that's going to add a lot more pressure. It makes your feet heavier. So I want to be here. And then I'm going to squeeze. The same time I squeeze my knees together, my knees come in together, I'm also going to raise my hips up towards me. I don't want to raise him away from me like this because that's going to give him a little bit of space to breathe. I want to raise my hips towards me at the same time I squeeze my knees together. This way. Okay. One thing you don't want to do, guys, you don't want to just put your feet down, you just let your legs hang down like this or even on his back. Or And also, you don't want to make, you want to make sure you can't see the shoulder. Sometimes I see people that are trying to finish a triangle like this and you can see the shoulder, now they have to rely on pulling the head down. Now don't get me wrong, pulling the head down is an excellent way to finish, especially if you can put it in properly, that's just extra pressure. You can always pull the head down and get the extra pressure. But you don't want to rely on bad technique to pull the head down. So when we get the position, calf on the back of the neck, shin perpendicular to the spine, hammer your feet, leg over the shoulder. You don't want to see the shoulder. You don't ever want to do that. Turn this leg out. Squeeze your knees together. You can still pull the head down or you can just raise your hips and squeeze your knees. And there's your triangle choke. All right, here's your basic rear naked choke. I'm going to give you a couple different ways in order to finish your same choke, but just a little bit of different grip. All right, right now I have in here, I grip here, I come over the head, behind it, finish there. I can finish here, this way. I can come through here and slide it back here. Or I can start here, this way, and come in through here. Same finish, just a different approach. Now, some of the details and what makes this choke work is not necessarily how I get to it, but just the finalization of it. I'm already, what I want to do is I want to make sure that my elbow is in line with his chin. If it's off to the side, it's going to leave him space to breathe. So I want it to be deep in here. Now, once that's deep in here, i got to stay close to him. I want my chest on his back, really close here. This is deep in line with his chin. Now I'm going to grab my arm deep up in here and close this up. So I want all this cut off and tight and closed up. So I'm here and here. Now the hand is behind his head. I don't want to leave it on top of his head here. I don't want to leave it like this. It's going to be too easy for him to take it off. I'm going to put it behind his head. So if I'm here this way, this is going to go behind his head here just like this. And I'm going to grab my tricep. It, depending on the size of your arm is going to depend on, it's going to really dictate how deep you can get. Some people may be here, some people may be able to get all the way in here, but 
you know, as long as you grip something in here, that's good. So I'm here, I'm gonna get behind his head here. I'm gonna make a fist with my hand. That's a little bit more pressure, makes it a little bit stronger. And I'm gonna close that up with my head. Here, now it's gonna be very difficult for him to get my hand out. Now, I'm gonna try to pinch my elbows together. And then I'm just gonna pull my shoulders back and expand my chest. I almost could just take a deep breath and just, and that's the motion I wanna make. So I'm gonna pinch my shoulder, my elbows together here, head down, chest on his back. Take a deep breath and just pull my shoulders back. And that's how I'm gonna get my finish. One more time, just I'm gonna be here and here. Now, here's what I don't want you to do, no matter what, is to try to finish a choke with the elbow not in line with the chin. If you're doing that, you're gonna be muscling, muscling it in too much and it's gonna make it easier for a guy to get out. If you get the elbow in line with the chin, grip here, behind the head, Squeeze the shoulder, squeeze the elbows, I'm sorry, squeeze the elbows together and just deep breath and pull your shoulders back. Very effective choke. I guarantee you, three seconds, he's going to be out for the count. All right, now let's talk about how to finish this guillotine properly. Because I gotta show you guys how to finish properly because I'm tired of seeing guys get to a guillotine position, they can't finish, they end up getting their arms really tired, then they can't even finish the fight because they're too tired. Now, the first thing I wanna make sure when I have a guillotine is that I come around the neck and get good coverage over the back of his neck. I don't wanna be on his head, I don't wanna be out here, I wanna be right on the back of his neck, heavy with my armpit on the back of his neck so I can get this arm in nice and deep. To cover his whole throat. Now, the grip, you know, guys, there's many different grips. I've seen, you know, guys come up with new grips every day almost. So the grip, it, there's just so many of them that, you know, it's not really that important as long as you get the, some of the other details right. But, but the most commonly used grip that you're going to see is probably going to be like this, a fist here, and then I'm going to come over the top. So the arm is over the head, make a slight fist here, come over the top with the other hand. So I'm going to come around his neck. Nice and deep, get good coverage over the back of his neck, here, and then I'm gonna grab my hand. Then I'm gonna cinch it in first, all right? Now, by cinching it in doesn't mean I'm pulling up. That's the most common mistake I see with guys doing a guillotine, is they're pulling up. They, they get a guillotine, they lay on their back, and then they start pulling up here. And that's wrong, you're never gonna finish like that when you, when you use those concepts. What you wanna do is you wanna come here, get nice and deep, make your grip, and then cinch in. Now I'm going to lay to my side, and then I'm going to rotate my elbow down. All right, now it's kind of hard to see the rotation of that because it doesn't take much when I'm laying on my back. So let's do it again from a different angle. If I have him here, I snap him down. I get this in nice and deep. Again, I'm not on his head here. I'm in nice and deep. Get this around. Got my grip underneath his neck here. I'm going to cinch it in first get coverage, and then rotate my elbow down. I'm gonna rotate down. Just a rotation down and a cinch here to finish, okay? Don't try to pull back like this. All that's gonna happen is he's gonna raise up with you, and then by the time he's done raising up, your arms are gonna be so tired you're gonna have to let go. So when we finish, we wanna be here, cinch, and rotate. And that's how you're gonna finish your guillotine. All right, now let's talk about how to finish the arm triangle. Now, getting to this position is, is not is gonna be as important as the finish. Once I get to the finish, I have to make sure everything is in a row. Once everything is in a row, it's almost effortless on how to finish. All right, the first thing I have to do is I have to cover this side of his neck with my shoulder. So I have to be deep in with, with my shoulder on this side of his neck. This is going to cover the other side of his neck here. Now, I'm going to put the hand that's behind his head, I'm going to have that facing down. The other hand is facing up. So I'm going to grab my forearm here and my elbow here. So, 
this shoulder and his neck, this palm facing down, I'm going to grab my forearm, the other hand's going to grab my elbow. Now, I'm going to square up with him, and I'm going to pretend like I've been drinking. I'm going to get real drunk, real heavy on top of him here. And I want to make my body perpendicular to his. And I already, I can feel the pressure on his neck. Now, as soon as I turn my head and I rotate my arms up, it finishes. That position, I'm just pulling my arm, just rotating them up here. Now, by me turning my head, it's going to keep him from getting his arm back. Because if I just try to do it like this, he may be able to get his arm, he may be able to bend his arm and get it in here, and I can't finish here. By me turning my head, it's going to keep him from putting his arm back. So I'm going to just here, turn my head. Very easy. Very easy. All I'm doing is grabbing my forearm and my elbow, rotating them up, keeping my weight heavy on the side, and turning my head into his arm. And that's how I'm going to finish. Now let's talk about how we're going to finish this Americana. The most important part, essentially, is dealing with your lines. Making sure your lines are proper before you try to finish. If your lines are right, the finish is going to be easy, and you're not going to have to use a lot of muscle into making it work. All right, now when I talk about lines, I'm talking about the direction of his elbow and his forearm and his bicep. I have to make sure his elbow is at a 90-degree angle. So when I come underneath his arm, his elbow has to be at a 90 degree angle. Now, my forearm and his forearm should be, should be parallel. My other forearm and his bicep should be parallel. So I'm here. So now all my lines are in order. I can use my head for a little bit, a little bit of pressure to help get this down. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to act like his hand is a paintbrush and I'm going to paint the floor with it. Pulling it down. Pulling down, getting his elbow a little bit closer to his hip. So I'm here. My lines are in order. Use my head for a little bit of pressure. Pull it down. Now, keeping his wrist on the floor, I'm going to raise the elbow up. So I'm starting here. Pull it down. And raise up. Now, what I don't want to see you try to do is don't try to finish it if, he, if you're less than 90 degrees. You're wasting your time, really, because if you come here and he gets his elbow and you're wasting your time, or if, he's, if it's over 90 degrees, he's going to be able to... To, to work his way out. So I want you to, when you get it, make sure it's at 90 degrees here. Head pressure down. Come down and then raise. That's how you're going to finish your Americana. Alright, now we're going to talk about finishing the Kimura. When I have a Kimura, there's a lot of different details I want to make sure, and I see a lot of people do these details wrong, so I want to cover them right now so that we don't get them wrong and we can, we're able to finish the Kimura. First thing, I have to get his hand away from his body, so I want to be out here. Well, also, what's going to keep him from being able to, to block it is my hip positioning. If my hips, if I'm underneath him like this, he can block this. It's not, I'm not going to get a lot of leverage into it. I gotta get my hips out, away from, from them. My hips are not underneath them, they're away from them. Now, 90 degrees, I want the elbow at 90 degrees. Here, controlling the wrist and the arm at 90 degrees. Now, I'm not gonna be lazy here, I wanna pinch this down on his elbow, on his shoulder with my elbow, I wanna pinch it down, keep it stable. Here, my elbows are close to my body. Now, and I'm going to use my body to push his wrist towards his head. I'm not going to stand my back here and try to use my arms like this. I'm going to be active. I'm going to be up. I'm going to pinch down his shoulder with my elbow. My elbow's in, attached to my body. And I'm going to use my whole body to push his wrist towards his head. Here, making sure my hips are out. Remember, don't try to finish with your hips underneath like this. It's not good enough. He can block this with his leg or he can just muscle out of this. 
if I get outside here this way, my hips are in a good position. Also, what I want to do is I want my knees to be on top of one another with his body sandwiched in between. So if this leg is here, my bottom knee is in on his chest, and I'm trapping him in between my legs here. So from here, this way, he's sandwiched inside, he can't get out. Pin down his shoulder, push the wrist towards the head, and I finish with the Kimura. Now let's finish with the Uma Plata. When I have Uma Plata, there's a couple different details that I want to make sure are in place so that I can get a good finish. All right, well, I want these knees, I want this knee on the floor and this one right on top of his shoulder, this point in that direction, this point in this direction here. Now I want to make sure I control the wrist with my hand. Here, keeping it stable, keeping them still. If I don't and I get a little loose, he may be able to squirm his arm out or get out, so I want to make sure this stays tight inside my hip and I control it here. Can't get out. And this knee is adding pressure on top of his shoulder. Now this hand is also going to be important as well. I see a lot of times a guy will get a, a umoplata and he won't control this shoulder and the guy that's in the umoplata will, will, will roll out and put me in the umoplata. I don't want that to happen. So if I come underneath the shoulder here, that will keep him from spinning underneath and returning the favor. So I'm going to keep control of this here, grab this here, and I'm going to sit up. Just sit up, and then sit up slowly. No matter, you know, what you're doing, sit up slowly, unless you're in a street fight, sit up slowly, because even if you're in competition, this could do a lot of damage, because if you think about the position, it's your whole body on somebody's arm. So sit up slowly so that you don't hurt your, hurt your, your partners or whoever. So I'm going to sit up slowly and get my finish. And that's how to finish an Uma Plata. Now let's finish this arm bar properly. Okay, there's some key details. I'm going to start from the bottom and work my way up. All right, the first thing that I have to, I have to have good position over his face. I want to keep his face down with my legs here. But the most important part of my leg work are my knees. I have to have my knees together. Now, I'm going to show you a little trick with the knees here. If, if my knees are open like this, and I try to finish on my, I use my pinky. I try to finish it. I can't. My knees are open. It's not going to work. Now, as soon as I squeeze my knees here, I can finish it just with my knees. Now, so it's very important that you keep your knees tight on the arm. That isolates the arm. Now that I have my knees under control, my hips, I have to have my hips close to him. I can't be, even with my knees are together, I can't be like this. I can't have space in between my hips and his shoulder. I have to be tight on him. So I want my knees together and I want my hips close to him, touching him, right on top of his shoulder. Because what that does is it ensures that the elbow is past my stomach. I want that close to me. Now, I'm going to put this right on the side of my ear. You can have it. You can have as many different grips. You can, you can hug it. There's a lot of different grips, but for me, I think the most secure way to finish it is to grab the hand because I have to have his thumb pointed in a certain direction in order to finish. So, knees together, sitting on the shoulder, hips are tight, and I'm here. I want this, all, I want this to be attached to my body as if this was a part of my torso. Because if I'm here and I have space in between, if he's strong enough and he keeps it here, he may be able to stop it. But his one arm will not stop the power of my torso. So if I'm here and I have it attached to my body as I'm falling back, there's no way he can really stop that. So knees together, sitting on, sitting on the shoulder with my hips, I'm close, I'm here, I'm going to grab. As if I was giving him five, what's up man, how you doing, you all right, that's all good. Alright, so I'm here, I'm tight to him, now I'm going to go back. And as you can see, he's already starting to raise up. I, my back doesn't even have to touch the floor to get the finish. Finish all because I'm tight here, my hips are close, and I have his arm attached to my body, so I can finish here. 
and you see my back never even hit the floor. Again, uh, there's different grips to finish. I can come through here. I can, you know, even if you're very confident in your finish, you, you have a little bit of experience, you can come through here. A lot of different ways to finish, but some key details not to do is don't try to finish it on my, don't sit on your back and try to finish like this and try to pull it in. You can start from here. Yeah, you can start from here, pull it up and finish, but it has to be attached to your body. There should be no space between this part of his arm and your body. Here, and finish. Now that's how you're going to finish your arm up. Now we're going to talk about finishing a knee bar. As in with the arm bar, it's very important that my hips are close to his hips. If my hips aren't close to his hips, it means his knee is not going to be in the right position. He's going to be here, and I'm not going to be able to get a finish. So I want my hips close to his hips. The second most important part about finishing knee bar is my knees have to be squeezing together. I have to, I'm going to try to touch my knees here. I have to squeeze his thigh with my thighs, try to get it nice and deep. Now, I'm going to put his foot on the inside, closest to the floor here. And I'm going to try to pinch his foot between my ear and my shoulder here. This is going to secure his foot. So I'm going to keep him from turning. So as I pinch it in here, I grab on the outside. This way. This hand's going to come on the heel. This is going to secure the position. Knees tight. Hips close. Pinch in the heel. Here. Now all I have to do is push my hips forward. And pull his heel back. So I'm just... Rocking back from here, rocking back doesn't take a lot of pressure at all as long as you have these things in order. Knees together, hips close, the knee has to be up past your hips here. Try to get that foot in between your ear and your shoulder to secure it. Come over the top, grab the heel and push. And that's how you're going to finish your knee bar. Now let's finish the heel hook. I'm going to start from the bottom, work my way up. Okay, I want to take my leg, make sure my leg is over top of his leg here, and I'm going to weave it underneath this leg here. I have two legs weaved underneath this leg here, and the reason why is because if I don't, it's going to, he's going to be able to spin out. I want to keep him from spinning out by locking his leg here. This is going to keep him from rolling. If he gator rolls, he's going to create a scramble, create space, and get out. So keep this locked down here. Now once I have that locked down, I gotta squeeze my knees together here and trap this thigh in between my thighs. I'm gonna try to touch my knees. I can do it, I'm gonna try to touch my knees here. This is gonna make it very tight on his leg. So I have this underneath his leg here, keep him from spinning, secure the leg by squeezing my thighs together, squeezing my knees together. Now, just like, just like finishing an arm bar or anything else, I want my butt close to his butt. I don't want a lot of space in between it. So, I want to make sure my butt's close to his. Once I have that position, once I have that, I have to create an angle. So I'm going to angle our bodies so that we're at a V. I don't want to be straight on here and try to finish here because it's not good enough. I want to create an angle. So I'm here. I want to try to create a V between our upper bodies this way. Now once I have a V, his body this way, my body this way, I want to point my knees away and I'm going to take my upper body and turn it backwards. When I turn my upper body backwards, I'm going to put my armpit on top of his toes and it's going to expose the heel. If you can see by me doing this, it's going to expose the heel. As you can see his body already is wincing because he feels the pain. I'm squeezing his knees, my butt's close to his, I got a V between our bodies. I'm here, I want to turn backwards and put pressure on the top of his toes. Just by coming down here. Now once I get that heel exposed, I'm going to put this part of my arm underneath his heel, just like this. So I'm here, turn backwards, that part of my arm underneath his toes, grip my hands, squeeze my knees, and I'm going to rotate his foot towards my head. Now my knees are pointed this way, my upper body is this way, 
I'm gonna take his foot and catch up to my my body. Uh, turn using my all my torso to twist it. Here, I don't want to just use my arms. I'm gonna use my torso. So as I'm here pointed in this direction, I turn my upper body this way and rotate that way. Now to finish the inside heel hook is gonna be a little bit different because I wanna turn the other way. I have the leg here. I'm gonna turn the other way. Now I'm gonna face him. So we're here this way. Turn right this way. I'm gonna face him. I'm gonna turn here. Now when I'm here, I don't want him to jump over that way, so I'm just gonna put my foot, this other foot, right on his hip. This is gonna keep him, the leg is coming. Instead of coming inside and hooking here, I'm gonna put this foot right on top of his hip. Here. Trap him in. Now, once I have the foot on top of his hip, he can't spin over and get out. Now I'm going to squeeze my knees together. Here. Trap his thigh. Now, my body's pointed this way. I'm going to take my upper body, turn back, put it on top of his toes. You see his body, it's already painful. Come under, it's going to expose his heel, come underneath, and rotate it. Already on top of his toes here. And then put this part of my arm underneath his heel, and I'm gonna rotate it. Again, don't ro don't try to pull with your arm. Use your whole body. Use your whole body in order to catch up to, to your legs. So I'm here. This is on top, so he can't spin out. Knees are together. Pinch down. And rotate. That's how you're gonna finish an inside and outside heel. Now let's talk about finishing a straight ankle lock. All right, my positioning is set up almost like the way I have set up, I've set up a heel hook. I want his thigh squeezed in between my knees here, and I'm gonna hook his leg here so he can't roll. Anytime you don't have this hooked here, if I'm just lazy like this, or even if I'm just like this, he's gonna have the ability to roll out, create space, and get out of your technique. So I wanna cover that, keep him secure. So I'm gonna lock him down here, my butt close to his butt to keep it nice and tight. Squeeze his thigh together here. Now I'm going to weave my arm through this space here, this way. You get this part of my arm on his ankle, right, right, right above his ankle, right above his Achilles tendon here, this way, here. And when I have that, I'm going to pinch his foot with my elbow right in between my ribs and my elbow. So I'm going to pinch it down here. This, just like this. Get this other elbow in nice and tight, and I'm gonna figure for my arms. I'm gonna grab my wrist here, and I'm gonna take this hand, and I'm gonna put it on his shin. Oh, I can feel the pressure now. It feels like I'm gonna snap his leg into a wishbone. So I'm here, I'm pinching it down, and I'm just gonna rock back and look back, and I feel the pressure. It's, it feels like his leg is gonna snap in half. So I'm gonna squeeze the legs, push off on his shin, rock it here, and Pinch this down and just look back. I can push my hips forward for a little bit extra pressure. Look back and then just pressure. And there's your straight ankle lock. Here's your toe hold. We're going to talk about the finish, some of the fine details, the fine points to give you a high percentage finish on your toe holds. All right. First thing I want to do is I want to make sure I grab the top of the toes. Okay, grab right here just like this, um, just to secure it. Now, I'm going to come over his, his Achilles tendon, his ankle area here, with my whole bicep and forearm nice and tight. Now, I'm going to figure for my arms. Now, once I've secured the toes here, I can actually put my thumb on the other side because that's going to give me a little bit more pressure to push down as opposed to holding the grip like this. I, once I secure it here, and I get my figure four, I'm going to change my thumb to be on top of the foot. So if I start here, I'm going to put my thumb on the other side. So I'm going to start here and come here. Then I'm going to put my thumb on the other side because that's going to give me more pressure to push down. Now I'm going to push the toes towards his ankle. At the same time I do that, I'm going to rotate this arm up so that his whole foot is kind of 
crunching into just crunching into a little ball. So I'm here, I start here, I grab it, figure four, remove the thumb, then come and rotate his foot down as I put pressure using my, my bicep and even my shoulder. I can be tight on it here and pull this up, push this down. And there's how you finish a toe hold in detail.